to the No Lake Trust for Real Estate show. I'm Christine George, your host, and I'm also the co-founder of Post and Beam Creative. Today, we have a very special show for you. Uh, Michelle Belsari is with us today. Michelle, for those of you who don't know, is a realtor in South Florida. She's also a national speaker, a podcaster herself, and the owner of So Boca Lifestyle and Media. Today, this is going to be so awesome. Today, she's going to talk about niche marketing. And I really, I'm so excited. Michelle, welcome to the show. So excited to have you. Thank you, Christine. I'm super excited. It's like such a great time to be chatting up and having conversations about taking your business to the next level. I love I it. Know. I know. Well, we're let's just get right into it. Tell us from your perspective, what is niche marketing? So niche marketing is focusing on a hyper uh, situation that, in my opinion, has more of like a specialty feel to it. You know, we hear about niches or niches, whatever you want to call it. There's no wrong way. And especially we see this with celebrities. They are really niching uh, their brands, whether it's in makeup, whether it's fragrance, whether it's a sneaker. And so in real estate, we as agents can niche into scenarios like seniors that downsize, probate, divorce, um, first time home buyers, relocation buyers, luxury. And you can even take it and niche it down further to what I like to say is micro niches. So like maybe you're focusing on luxury waterfront with dockage. So mm -hmm. it's just carving out something specialized that you can focus on, you can own it, and you can grow your business with it and get known as the go-to in that niche. I think I love that. I think that's a great way to sort of help propel your personal brand because with one and a half million realtors in the United States, it becomes very, very difficult to stand out and distinguish yourself. Yeah. Um, but what about, I mean, what's the, aside from that, what's the benefit of having a niche? Because I would wonder, like, are you limiting your income by niching down? That's a great question. And I get that a lot when I'm speaking and um, training agents. So here's the thing. You don't have to give up your existing business to add a niche to your business. Sorry, I have a dog. Um, so what you can do is look at your existing business and see if there's anything in particular that's jumping out that you're doing over and over and over again. That could be a niche for you. You may already be in a niche and not even realize it. However, one of the things I do believe in is that agents having a listing niche that in particular is not tied to the economic cycle, but tied to the life cycle, okay, is a really great way to build your brand because then you're not as tied into, for example, interest rate hikes, which we've been dealing with. When you have a motivated seller in a niche, then you've got a motivated seller in a niche. And so the, the, the niches that I mentioned uh, earlier, those tend to have more motivated sellers because they need to sell, they have to sell, they're court ordered to sell, there's a variety of reasons. So in my opinion, you get known in a specialty, but that doesn't take your expertise away from being a real estate agent and working with other buyers and other sellers. But maybe you want to market yourself a little heavier towards the people that uh, would be a great referral source for you, you know? Yeah. So that makes sense. So when you say, um, you said economic versus niche, the life cycle, life cycle, right. It's so a, it's, it's essentially, cycle. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. So essentially you're, you're, you're creating a more consistent base, uh, business instead of going up and down, up and exactly. down exactly. and letting the market control your, you know, how much That's business basically. you do. Yeah. 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 And I think the thing to, to understand is I got into uh, probate and then seniors after the market crashed in 2008. So I walked the walk on this. I was, you know, like so many other agents back then, no business, thinking of getting out of the business and then said, okay, what can I do that's different? That's going to have a little more consistency with people that are actually motivated to sell right now. And I had dealt with some probate 
uh, before as a buyer's agent. I'd also gone through it with both my parents. So I had a little bit of an understanding of it. And I was like, well, you know, this is, this kind of fills my bucket. I like helping people. I like being able to coordinate moving pieces. I know how to get a house cleaned out. I know how to kind of stage. And this might be a really good fit for me. So that isn't necessarily for everyone. But if, if you think about like people that you know who have had to sell, they usually fall into one of those pillars. Yeah, I I I, I love that. So um, if you're an agent who wants to get into a specific niche, what what are the steps to determine what's the best target for you? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I think one of the things that you can do is really think about what you've had experience with if you're already in the business. What have you had experience with? Is there anything that's kind of coming into like a column where you go, like, oh, yeah, I've done, done like three different divorce situations. Oh, okay, maybe I should look at that. Maybe you live in a community and you love to golf and there's a big golf club. Uh, maybe that's where you could focus on a niche uh, with golf. Or like my husband uh, is a sport fish captain. We have a boat. Um, I easily can talk about boating and fishing. It's not my niche per se, but you can sit back and think, okay, what do I like to do and how can I align with this? So for example, I was on a coaching call the other day and um, I asked one of my um, folks that was on the call, I said, so what, what are your hobbies? And it turned out, you know, he likes to camp. So he's camping. And I said, well, are you in any groups on Facebook that are around camping? Not really. I said, you might want to get in there because now you're with your own people, right? Talking yeah. about camping and tents and utensils and whatever the heck people talk about when they're camping, right? Um, and I said, and then you could start your own group on Facebook for that niche. And you could be the only realtor in that niche, okay? I said, the other thing is, where are you camping? So you mentioned where he's camping. I said, well, um, are there homes and cabins and stuff there? He's like, yeah, I go, maybe you could get to know a realtor up that way and you guys could start forming a referral relationship together. I said, now you've got a niche with something you love doing. Yes. You can eat it, sleep it, breathe it, you know, whatever it is. So I love to thrift. And so for me, I can talk about thrifting all day long. Believe it or not, that attracts like people to me. Mm -hmm. And even though that's like a hobby niche, they probably at some point are going to sell property, mm -hmm. right? And so I always mention I'm in real estate. I love, I say I'm a niche witch. I love to thrift. Here's my thrift wall today, you know, or I'll talk about, Hey, you know, you could stage your house very easily. One, get rid of stuff that you don't need. You can sell it on marketplace, go thrifting, find a few key pieces and restage your house with those thrifting mm -hmm. pieces, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I just think there's an opportunity and I do have a free guide that has 50 different real estate niches to help get those creative juices going for agents and, and some are buyers, uh, oh. buyer niches and some are seller niches. So I can send you the link for that. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, I can send you the link for that. And it breaks right. it down into 50 different niches that you might want to consider that you may not even be aware of, you know? I mean, look, military uh, and VA, yes. those are great niches. You know, yeah. we're starting to see military divisions being built out at uh, different brokerages now. Yeah. You know, it's a big niche. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. It makes me, it always reminds me of, um, we have a client out in in uh, Portland, um, Pam Blair and her, her brokerage is Yoga Bug Real Estate. And oh. it completely speaks to her passion for yeah. yoga. I mean, she's a yogi. She's a yoga teacher. She exactly. also loves dogs. And so oh. she brings her, her dogs into, you know, everything related to real estate on yeah. social media, right? So um, those are, I think, are great examples of um, great ways to generate business um, based on what you love. And that's just one of the beauties about this business, I think, is that you can turn something you love yeah. into business for yourself. Exactly. And the right? thing is, then you take the, what, what it is that you love 
And then you formulate a marketing and branding plan behind it. Okay. So talk to me about that. Like what are some of the ways to attract people in your specific niche? I think video first and blogging second. I do believe in blogging and I blog with Soboka, which is a niche that I created, a hyper local brand to attract buyers and sellers. And also I do some uh, brand collaborations with it. So I love um, like a juicy platform that you can then like, to me, that's top of the funnel, right guys? So top of the funnel. So you have your YouTube videos, right? Or blogs, and then it goes down. So then you can chop it all up and you can take pieces from those things and put them into, I would say, no more than really two social media platforms at this point. I think agents are burnt out and overwhelmed. So I think you need to kind of know where your people are. I do think, let me take it back, maybe three. Facebook is key. Yeah. It is not going to go away and it's not just for old people. Okay. <laughs> so you have to like remember that for you giants out there. Um, it's, it's a basis of everything. It's the basis of meta. And then you have Instagram. Yeah. Right. So, and so I really believe like if you do those two along with either a blog or YouTube, or you could take, you could take a YouTube transcribe it and turn it into a blog. I think that that's the way to attract people, keyword it properly. And now with chat GPT, we have a much easier way to keyword anything that we're doing SEO, the descriptions, SEO, anything. It's yeah. like a freaking Christmas gift that came way. Isn't early. it? Isn't I'm it? telling you, I, I, we were talking about this today in Clubhouse. And yes, it's still a thing for some of us. Uh, we do mi- many mi- micro masterminds there every day. And it's a group of us that met at, when it first started. And it's been fantastic. But we had an agent who was... Um, very concerned about it. And I think mainly because the agent just wasn't understanding it. So uh, the conversation typically flows in these rooms that we're in and we all know each other. I said, let me put it to you this way. Take your niche and her niche is selling brown stones in Brooklyn. I said, take take your tagline and put it in a chat GPT and ask chat GPT to write a social media post for you that talks about three things you can do in Brooklyn and include hashtags that are relevant and emojis. I said, if you do that, I think you'll have a better understanding of what you can, the power of this. Well, she did it. She goes, oh my gosh. I said, okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to ask ChatGPT to give you five different versions of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, now what you can do is you can really take this and make it into a blog. You can ask ChatGP to t- turn into a blog. Of course, you need to check it for plagiarism and things like that. And you need to insert yourself into it. Like you need exactly. to that, right? Yeah. But I said, that's the power. And so now there really isn't under excuses not to write something and have it SEO properly. So I literally yeah. went into past blogs of mine and re would it and renamed the SEO title, which that's the meta description you all see when you Google something, right? Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you something. I'm getting a lot more traction on certain blogs, you know, especially like pros and cons of moving to Boca Raton and things like that that are real estate driven. Michelle, what do you, what do you, I know I can already like hear so many agents going, what does that mean? You re would it. <laughs> what does that mean? So the key word that people are searching for, right? And I'm not a blog expert, but I do blog with S, uh, with Soboka. So looking for like how people are searching for a topic. So how are they searching for your city? And you can go in and just, you know, put something in and say real estate in Boca Raton, and you'll see a bunch of different uh, articles pop up and you'll get a feel for how people are searching. And yeah. you can ask ChatGPT to put together something exactly like that, like with the appropriate keyword that people are searching for, for your city and real estate. And think about how you search for things, you know? So you can do that for any city or community or county that you're in. 
and start small. You don't have to do like a 3000 word post either. I do like 500, 700 quick, quick yeah. for topics. Like I'm like real short now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So let's go back to video. You said top of the funnel video and blogging. And then, um, you know, obviously take pieces of those things, repurpose them along the way, focus on Facebook, focus on Instagram. What do you think about LinkedIn? So I know LinkedIn has amazing value. It just doesn't really right now for me. As a matter of fact, I unhooked it from my social media platform that I'm using that schedules things out because I wanted to add my Instagram accounts to it mm-hmm. instead. That's where my audience is. Okay. Now, if you have an audience on LinkedIn, definitely use it. And I know LinkedIn is uber powerful. So I'm not telling you not to use it. I think it's an individual by individual basis. Yeah. I very rarely get a lot of back and forth with anything I post on LinkedIn, but I also don't pay any attention to it. Mm-hmm. I like TikTok. I like Instagram. I like YouTube. I like Facebook. So if I spent more time in LinkedIn, I'm sure because I know it's powerful and I know there are realtors that just love it. It's just not my jam. Okay. That's a, that's a great answer. Um, so So let's uh let's kind of take a, a little bit of a different turn what if your clients or prospective clients in your niche you know aren't doing a ton online right yeah. like maybe they're seniors they're some like i've got senior parents right and they're they're not necessarily i mean they yeah. might be on facebook but they're not necessarily in other places online exactly. so how do you reach them email i think email is fantastic most people still check their email even seniors um, I think email marketing is not dead at all. I just look at my inbox. I'm sure you look at your inbox and you see the volume of emails. When somebody say that the average agent gets 90 plus emails a day? Mm-hmm. Um, and it just depends. Could be client-based, could be things you signed up for, whatever. Um, but I think email is is great. And I will say that I think texting has its moments as long as people know that the text is from you. Yeah. You know, so ways to connect with um, that crowd could be in those manners, particularly. Yeah. And of course, a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. The old fashioned <laughs> pick up the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you what's your opinion about print? In what regard? In marketing to a specific niche. Do you think it works? Um, I think it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's probably the biggest reason it isn't as popular. It's, it's definitely like you do see it in luxury, Mm -hmm. uh, but you don't see it all the time anymore. Like years ago, you would see like homes and land and things like that. And I advertised back when I was first new in homes and land, you know, that was the way to go. Um, Postcards are still very strong, but I think you have to know that that's like a long game. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know how agents really feel about print. We don't talk about it. Yeah. It's rare that we talk about it. So that tells me that's probably not um, top of the funnel. Yeah. So I'll tell you my opinion. Um, I, I think that it has its place. Yeah. Uh, it is expensive. I think that if an agent wants to target a specific niche or a specific neighborhood, it it, like you said, it is a long game and it has to be done well. It has to be done really well. It can't be a four by six thrown together postcard that you're going to put on Vista, you know, get it Vista yeah. or something like that. That's a total waste of your dollars. Uh, but I do think that in small doses, in otherwise, in other words, don't do like, you know, the 3000 people that live in, you know, the small town. Uh, get really niche, know exactly where it's going, keep it small and keep the the quality of the content super high. And then again, it's got to be a long-term uh, strategy. Yeah. And I think too, if you're on a budget, say you're a newer agent and you want to get known, um, use one of the apps that a lot of the associations uh, give you. And even if you don't have the app, you can go into the tax roll and target the home sellers that have owned for a longer time, they're probably more apt to want to sell 
Yes. Yes. And so if you go in and say, I want to do home sellers that have owned the home for 15 years or longer, Mm -hmm. this is the price point. Then it will shorten that list, might make it more affordable for you and keep you consistent Mm -hmm. with sending it out once a month. Because you got to do it for like 12 months. Yep. Right. So maybe you're sending out. Maybe you're sending out 50 to 100 postcards versus trying to do a whole neighborhood. And I think that's an old school, you got to blanket the neighborhood deal. I don't think that's necessary. And not everybody has that budget. And now agents are really cutting back on things. But here's the other thing I would suggest, and I did an Instagram story on it. Um, Start looking at all the apps, all the programs that you have paid for, the monthly stuff. Mm -hmm. And go on your app, on your phone, app store on your phone, tap on your profile and just see what you subscribe to at two o'clock in the morning when you couldn't sleep. Um, and start I couldn't getting agree rid with you that, more. Right? Yep. Start, start getting rid of that and um, look at conflicting platforms. So I got rid of one that I, I've been paying for forever. I don't use it. It was $60 a month. I don't use it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I ended up saving about 120 bucks. All right. So starting next month, that's, I could use that for a postcard campaign. Right. 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 So that's where I think agents right now, when we're in this transitional phase of real estate and trust me, guys, peaks and valleys, we've been there before, we'll be there again, but think how you want to see your business flow moving forward. So adding a listing niche with a micro niche to it figure out your marketing and branding, don't overspend in that area, but be smart about it. You'll know what's going to work for you and get out and start networking again. Yeah. Like that's really good, but target your networking to events that make sense. Like just going to a happy hour, that's a drinking event. Mm -hmm. Listen, I love a great glass of Prosecco, but at the end of the day, if I'm going to go network, I'm going there to meet specifically people that I want to meet. So do a little research if you can ahead of time and know who you're going to meet with. So if there is a niche that you're thinking about, see who's attending those events in that niche. And then make sure you uh, introduce yourself and then run something through chat GPT before you go that helps you uh, remember that it's not about you. It's about them and have three good questions you can ask somebody that you meet. Oh my God, that's brilliant. That's so, (laughs) so, that is like, you know, that is probably some of the best advice I've heard in a long time, because I think people get um, paralyzed when it comes to networking. They think yeah. I just got to show up and they get nervous. They get scared, especially if they don't know anybody, but that's yeah. a great strategy. Like yeah, research the people that are going to be there, figure out three questions to ask people when you meet them. And at least that sort of will solve some of your analysis paralysis or some of your anxiety going into a room of people you don't know. That's great advice. Exactly. And you know, the rule of thumb that I learned years ago is, and don't go up to a party of two. If there's three people, that makes it a lot easier. But two people, a lot of times they're having private conversations or they're just not as open to having the third wheel come in. So uh, no, it's not you. Just that that was something else. And and honestly, don't ever drink at these things. Like seriously, yeah. do not. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, one other question I had was, so so what if you're an agent who has a niche that you're just so burnt out on? Like, let's say it's first time home buyers, yeah. right? It's been a hard couple of years, right? So Right. No, so, right now there are none. <laughs> there are right. Well, there's no inventory either for them, right? So. How do you shift from one niche to another? Well, so that's a great question. And I started off, my first niche was first-time homebuyers. So in the mid-2000s, you know, when I was working with them, um, it was also a little tough because the market runoff was happening. But back then, one of the things I learned, and I stand by this, there are usually some sort of programs to help with down payment assistance. Hometown Heroes has uh, been around for a while now. Um, whether they have funds or not, that's what you have to check. The counties and cities have SHIP programs. So yes. However, with that being said, and this is what I've been saying for a while now, if you are working with buyers, and I like buyers, I just find that if my 
My business is a little more on the listing side. I have control over my time. I have control over the inventory and I have control over what's closing. And frankly, I'm just not as burnt out Mm because buyers can burn you out because they just can't. But if it were me right now, what I'd be doing is I'd be finding out who in your community, what companies are having people relocate. Who's relocating to your area? Put on a landing page on your website that you can help with relocations and look at the, um, there's some different uh, data out there. So you can see where people are relocating from to your city and then maybe start doing some reverse marketing to that city and talk about here are five things you need to know about relocating to my city. Okay. Let people know that you can um, do virtual walkthroughs for them, you know, put it back out there. And the reason I say segue from first time home buyer to relocation, because I think relocation is a great niche because here we have a motivated buyer. And in some cases they're motivated sellers. So for example, I did one this uh, late spring, they found my Soboka information, reached out to me. They were relocating here. And I said, do you have a home to sell? They said, yes. I said, do you have a realtor? They said, no. Wow. I sent them three realtors and they ended up picking one. So I got the referral fee on that. Right. And then they did a relocation. So I would, if I were working with first time home buyers right now, I would segue that into relocation buyers and figure out a listing niche. Now, with that being said, I'm probably going to have some first time home buyers down the road because my kids are 28 and 33. <laughs> and I've already worked with some of their friends. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But it was before COVID. Yeah. And my kids are having a tough time too. I, I We have to figure out like, what are they going to be able to do? Because it's the name of the game right now. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome advice. All right. As we uh, start to wrap this up, What are three pieces of advice that you would want our community to walk away with today? Pick a niche. Pick a niche and pick a niche. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Number one, really, in all seriousness, pick a listing niche. Focus on choosing a listing niche uh, and get that on your whiteboard as a goal that you want to accomplish. Um, At this particular time, we're coming into fourth quarter, uh, pick a niche and start planting the seeds to figure out what you want to do with that and how you see that uh, blending into your current business. Um, Education. I'm a big fan of always staying educated. I say hashtag engage at any age. I don't care what your age is. It is not an excuse to not continue learning things. And, and I am of a certain age and I love learning and implementing and it'll do nothing but keep you relevant in your business. So, um, and I say three, I've been watching Blue Zones on Netflix and doing more and more research on it and community, having a community that supports you. My clubhouse community is badassy. And I was out at Tom Ferry with like 40 people that I met on Clubhouse in 2020. We've maintained the relationships and friendships. We help each other. We brainstorm. We share tactics. We share information. Having a community in real estate is huge. And it doesn't have to be at your brokerage. We are all at different brokerages. So we don't pitch each other. We don't try and recruit each other. We just want to be better realtors. And Mm -hmm. if we're better then our transactions are better and our clients get a better client experience, right? So those are three things that I would say right now. Yeah. And, and and as a bonus, take care of your health and your mental health. This is not an easy business. We have a lot of depression and anxiety that goes along with it. Sometimes we deal with not easy people. Um, you know, the ebb and flow of commissions can be stressful for families and marriages. And so you have to carve out some time every day to move. And I think this is what a a takeaway of mine is from Blue Zones Mm -hmm. is getting up from your computer chair and not just going to the car, but walking and Mm -hmm. moving and getting good sleep and drinking water. And I have to say, I've not been great at that Mm -hmm. in the last year or so. Um, Just busy 
my daughter was getting married and I came back from the wedding and I went, I've got to like readjust some things and that kind of floated by my radar. So um, I think those are just some things that I, I personally do. I never tell people to do things I'm not doing myself. Yep. 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 I love that. Oh my gosh, Michelle. Okay. Last question. Um, Finish this sentence. No like trust is. A dog. (laughs) (laughs) I've got both of them right here. (laughs) You're so funny. I love it. (laughs) I'm not kidding. They're like my besties. My assistants. I'm like, I I, every once in a while, they're laying here. And I literally, sometimes I'll walk in. Okay, guys. I'm going on a Zoom. Yeah. Be quiet. Do the and I do a story and I go, okay, it's it's pregame, no barking, yeah, no being on the floor, <laughs> no weird noises, no scratching. <laughs> oh my god. I, I was gonna say one other thing, but I'm not going well, to. You know, well, they're both boys, so yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> no scratching. I got one of those too. Um, oh my god, this has been so fun. So, where can people find you? Oh, so you can find me on Instagram at the Michelle B. It's uh, Michelle with one L. So T-H-E-M-I-C-H-E-L-E-B-E-E at the Michelle B. Send me a DM to say hi. I'll also be happy to send anybody the um, free uh, PDF that I put together on uh, 50 niches. And uh, you can certainly uh, follow me at... um, sipsocialsal.com. That's my website. And, um, you know, I'm pretty easy to, to find, uh, you can look up a hashtag. So Boca, you can usually stumble upon me somewhere. Yep. Yep. And it's so Boca.com too, right? Yeah. With three O's. So, so Boca.com is my lifestyle. I'm also have an Instagram there at so Boca, uh, okay. but I do a lot of educational content on at the Michelle B. Yes. So whatever you want to follow me on is fine with me, but certainly reach out to me and I'll send you the freebie. Oh, awesome. And we'll put all of that in the show notes for Beautiful. everyone who's listening. Um, Michelle, it's been a pleasure. It's been just so fun chatting with you. So fun. Um, thanks so much for being here. And Anytime. for those of you who are um, watching today or watching the replay or listening to the podcast next week, Thank you so much for being with us. If you like what you hear, share it with your friends. Give us a five-star review and we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye.